This is another great physics problem. You know, I don't do ungreat physics problems, I don't think. I like to think I do great physics problems. But let me explain the situation. The picture's not perfect. Uh, I have here a block, 1.1 uh, kilograms. And it's up against a vertical wall. And I'm pushing at an angle theta with respect to the, hor the horizontal. So pushing it this way, theta would be zero. Um, so if I push up with a 20 degree angle, so this is 20 degrees, what force would you need to keep that block there? And there is friction. If there's no friction, it wouldn't work. Well, it, actually, it could work. Um, yeah, it, it could work. <laughs> Take that um, but I like this problem because it changes the way we really think about forces, uh, in particular the normal force and the frictional force. So I'm going to use this uh, picture and let's draw all the forces acting on the block and then we can write Newton's second law. So there are uh, one, two, three, four forces that we're gonna need to consider. Uh, the first one that people like to put in there is the gravity. So there's a gravitational force, uh, we'll just call that mg pointing down. And then I have this force already, the push force fp, so that's two of them. Now, what prevents the block from falling. Well, it's partially this force, right? This this is going to push up a little bit, but it's not everything. Um, there is going to be a frictional force. So the frictional force is always parallel to the surface and um, in the opposite direction, in the direction to prevent sliding. So this wants to slide down. So the frictional force is actually going to be up. I'll put F friction. And now there's one other force because there's a component of force pushing this way. And so it, it, the block's not going to accelerate that way. So there has to be a force pushing back. And that's the normal force. So here you have friction is up and the normal force is, is horizontal. And that's not normally the way we see things. Uh, so let me put this right here because that's the way we like to do it. And then this is the angle theta. So... If this is at rest, then the net forces have to be zero. Let's pick this as my x direction, and that is the y. And now we can write f net x and f net y. I'll write them right here. Let's do f net x is equal to zero. So what forces are in the x direction? Well, I have this normal force, and then I have part of the push. So if I look at this, this is the x component of the push force right there. Right, that's in the x direction. And if I have that as my angle, fp is my hypotenuse, and that's my adjacent side. So I'm going to call this fp, I don't know the value of that, cosine theta, and then I have the normal force, minus n equals zero. So can I solve this for the push? No, because although I know theta, I don't know n, so I can't. But let's look at the y direction, f net y equals zero, again, because it's n equilibrium. So in this case, I have the friction force is up, f friction. I have gravity is down, minus mg. And then I have part of the push force in the vertical direction, and that's the opposite side. So this is going to be plus fp sine theta. So I have, I don't know f friction, I don't know fp, I don't know n. So I actually have three equations I don't know. But there is a third. Just like Yoda said in, was it Empire Strikes Back? That boy is our last hope. No, there is another. Yeah, he said, no, I think that's Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. No. I can't remember. So um, I have this. Friction force, if I'm looking at the minimum pushing force, I need the maximum friction. So I can say friction is equal to, this is the maximum mu static friction times the normal force. So I actually have a third equation. And I'm going to put a note here. Max friction. Okay. So let's just go ahead and substitute this in up here, and I'll get two equations to a known. So let me write this, rewrite this. So I'm going to write that equation. Fp cosine theta minus n equals zero, and this is going to be mu s n minus mg plus Fp sine theta equals zero. Now we can get to work. 
So I have, I don't know FP, I don't know N. I don't know N, I don't know FP. Two equations, two unknowns. Let's solve that top one for N. Because I don't really care about N, I care about FP. So if I solve that for N, I get N equals FP cosine theta. Now I can substitute that into this equation, which becomes mu s times n, which is going to be, I'll put it in parentheses, fp cosine theta, and then I have minus mg, and then I have plus fp sine theta. Now, the key here is equal zero. The key here is to get all the things I want to solve for on one side. So I'm going to add mg to both sides, and I get mu s fp, that's a p, cosine theta plus fp sine theta equals mg. Now I can factor out the fp, so I get fp times mu s cosine theta plus sine theta equals mg, and divide by that stuff, fp equals mg over mu sub s cosine theta plus sine theta. Does it have the correct units? Well, this should be in force, newtons. m times g is a force in newtons. Mu has no units. Cosine theta has no units. Sine theta has no units. Remember, those are these are ratios for right, right triangles, and that's just a coefficient. So the bottom has no units. We end up with we end up with uh, newtons. I was trying to think of the next thing. I, I, let's just let's just calculate the answer from there um, because some things aren't completely obvious here. So let's just put in our values. Uh, I had what did I have? I had the mass of the book is one. Let's write it over here. M equals one point one. Mu equals 0 0.33, and theta is 20. Making sure my calculator is in degree mode. So I'm going to say clear parentheses mass 1.1 times 9.8, close parentheses divided by parentheses mu 0.33 times cosine 20, close parentheses, it gave me one of them, plus sine. 20 close parentheses for the sign, close parentheses for the bottom equals, and I get FP, this is the magnitude, 16.5 newtons. Just as a check, I mean, what's the weight? Well, what's 1.1 times 9.8? That's like 10, right? So you're gonna have to push harder to keep it up. So that's that. Now, I, I wanna think about something and just make this a fun problem. I know you're thinking, well, it was already fun. If I, if I push straight that way, I could hold up the block too. I could push straight that way. Um, and would it require more or less? So l let's look at the extreme cases. If I push straight up, so if theta, if theta equals 90, then FP is equal to, uh, let's put the number in here, 1.1 times 9.8 is 10.78. That's pushing straight up. If I push straight that way, theta would be zero. So I can just redo this calculation right here. Let's put if theta is zero, then that's zero and that's one. So I get uh, clear 1.1 times 9.8 divided by the coefficient of friction, which is 0.33. I get 32. So if I push this way, if I push that way, it's 10. If I push that way, it's 32 newtons. So pushing straight up is less. And this was less too. But is there some angle that's even less than that? I don't know. I mean, we could just change this angle and recalculate everything. There is a calculus way to do it too. But we could just change that angle because we know the solution. So this is what's nice about this solution. I have the solution as a function of theta. Let's just make a graph of the push force as a function of theta. And you know you could do this on graph paper, like FP, theta, and who is it gonna do this? Is it gonna do that? Is it gonna do something else? I don't know. So let's just do it. And I'm gonna do it 
because I like this, I'm gonna do it in Python. You could do it in a spreadsheet, that'd be pretty good. But I'm gonna show you how to do this in Python. It's actually not too hard. Uh, so I'm jumping over here to the computer. I need that equation, so remember that equation. So I'm over here using uh, web v Python. This is in trinket.io, it's all the same thing. But this isn't actually real Python. This is Python uh, with some useful stuff in there. It has very good graphing. I like the graphing in here. So let's just jump into this. Um, let me make this bigger so you can see it. Um, if, you're, if you've never done Python before, I'm gonna go ahead and write FP, uh, that's right, M equals 1.1, G equals 9. I'm using G as the scalar value, make that a little bit bigger. Uh, and let's say theta equals 20 times pi divided by 1. I wanna convert it into radians. Uh, I need the coefficient, mu is 0 0.33. Let's just calculate and see if we get the same thing. So I'm gonna say FP equals M times G divided by mu times cosine theta plus sine theta. Should that be plus or minus? Mu S, okay, plus. And now I'll print that out. Print, let's just print it. And then I can run it. And I got this, that's what I got, okay. But you can see this way, I can easily just change the angle to 25 degrees and rerun it, and it's bigger. I can just keep changing the number. So, um, and that's what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna make Python change the number, and I'm gonna graph it. So let's make a graph, and then we'll make the graph better. So to make a graph in Python, in this WebVPython, I'm just gonna say F1 equals G curve. So G curve is a built-in function in WebVPython that allows me to graph. And let me show you how to plot points on G curve. I can just say F1.plot the, the coordinate 1, 1, uh, F1.plot the coordinate uh, 2, 2, uh, F1.plot the coordinate uh, 3.3, 4.1 and now it's going to plot those three points on my graph there you go there's one two three see simple i, I don't want to do it that way though so what instead i want to do is to take theta and make a loop and change theta and do it automatically so let's say theta equals zero d theta how much that's my delta theta how much am i going to change the angle by let's just say let's just say one degree, one times pi over 180. Now I can say while theta is less than 90 degrees, which is pi over two, do the following. Uh, I'm just gonna do this, print theta, theta equals theta plus d theta. So this line 16 just takes the value of theta, adds a little bit to it and makes that the new value of data. So it increments the value of data and makes it bigger. This is gonna, let's just run this and see what happens. There, see there's my value, all my value of data. But I don't really wanna do that. What I want to do is to calculate FP. So let's do that. I'm just gonna copy this. I, I know, I, and my value of data changes, so my value of FP is gonna change. Now I'm gonna plot F1.plot, I don't want to plot number one versus number two, but uh, my X coordinate I want as theta. And let's do it in degrees, so I'm gonna convert back to degrees, times uh, 180 divided by pi, and then FP. And then I'm gonna increase the value of theta and do it again. That's it. Check that out. And you see something actually very amazing there is a minimum. You can actually get a smaller force pushing than pushing straight up. Uh, and we'll change that in a little bit. Let's make a better graph though. I can make a better graph up here. I'm just gonna say uh, G1 equals graph, uh, title equals block on wall, just for fun. Uh, I can give it an X title for my graph. It's gonna be equal to angle in degrees and that could be anything you want. I'm gonna give a uh, Y title of FP in Newtons. And then I'm gonna give this width equals 500, height equals 250. And down here in my curve, I'm gonna make it blue. Color equals color dot blue. 
from Brendan. Now that's nice. That's a nice graph right there. Now, so I can mouse over to about somewhere about there. 70 degree, a 70 degree angle is actually going to be less than pushing it straight up. What about this? What if I have more friction? 0.6 is my coefficient of friction. Now you see it's even more pronounced that there is a minimum, right? So I only want to put push it 59 degrees and I'll, that'll be the lowest angle. So it's just a way to optimize this problem, uh, to play around with it. I just think it's fun to consider what would happen as you change that angle. It's very interesting to me. Uh, so I'll give you this Python code. Let's save this, uh, give it a name, and I'll put a link down below, uh, block on wall problem. And if you want to play with it, uh, if you click that link, you don't even need to log in. You can change the code and rerun it. And you can't break it because it's my code and you, it will never permanently change unless you copy it and use it for your own, which you're welcome to do. Okay. Hope that helps. Hope that was fun. I had fun.